five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. It goes from now until midnight on the East Coast of the United States of America. All right, here we go. Uh, we uh, we uh, call this guy all the time, and we just do it this way because he always comes up with some kind of amazing... Uh, stuff uh, to start off with. Hold on. That uh, was ringing a little bit. There we go. Mm-hmm. Kooky, kooky, lend me your toe tag. Kooky, <laughs> kooky, <laughs> kooky, kooky, give me some formaldehyde. <laughs> Kooky's dead, motherfucker. I was going to manage that motherfucker. Oh, shit, Kooky's dead. Hey, he was 86. Come on. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, yeah, like, I know. That's old. Yeah, that's enough kooky. It wasn't, that's like, enough kooky for- it wasn't like he was a young puppy. You <laughs> nah, know. you know, he was still better than Fabian. Though, then so. again, <laughs> what scares me about it is he's only six years older than I am. So, oh, yeah. look out. Well, he, <laughs> the, the ride is coming to a stop for all of us. So don't worry. We're and all getting I, off soon enough. And I've got that prostate cancer thing, so I'm. Being oh, you told me that. Yeah, I'm being, I'm being being treated for that, which will okay. probably wind up with me. They said that won't kill me. It's not going to kill me. Okay, uh-huh. they're going to they're going to clear it up. It's not going to kill me. Something okay. else Good. will. That's the happy news. Something, Something else you. will. Something's going to kill you. You might get hit by a cab but, like the lady but, who rode Gone with the Wind. You but, never know. Anything can happen anyway. By the way, if I haven't. Uh, already uh, done so. This is uh, Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Like anyone cares. Thank you. I'm Stephen Pearl. And if you don't like me, I'm Kipper Donna Jr. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. The, one of the new faces of 42. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, new faces of 42. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, anyway, uh, uh, yeah. How you doing? Good, how you now, man? Still alive, you know, uh, rock and roll, sitting on the bed with two of the three cats, and everything's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, where's the other cat? Doesn't want to have anything he's to do on with the, He's on the couch. Muddy, Muddy Waters is on the couch. He's a loner. He's thinking of some blues lyrics on the couch now. So. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think one of the cats is going to join him now. now I have one cat on the bed. One of the bed, two in the box, Bush, boss. One in the box, one in the bush. Yeah. Well, we, like can, we can make this a tribute to um, to Ed Burns. This, you know. this whole show is dedicated to Ed Kooky Burns. Kooky, Kooky, why am I spill? That's a guy who had a career for about three and a half minutes. Yeah, well, no, how, how long, what was he on, 77 Sunset Strip? How long that show was on, that was his Yeah, career. and then he had a hit record, Kooky, Kooky, Lend Me Your Comb. He didn't even oh, sing, God. he said it, you know. He's, yeah, he talked on it. Yeah, like, hey, baby, I'm the living end. No, it's, it's cool. But it became, it's cool. A, it became a number one record, and I think oh, what, sure. what they learned by that is if you monopolize uh, a, uh, or uh, what is it? Uh, well, turn into money. A television yeah. character, you could make sure. some money out of it by selling records and oh, sure. lunch boxes. They all made they all made records, like the kid from the Donna Reed show and Sal Minio. All those people made records. You know, they, a lot of them were horrible, but uh, they sold. Yeah. But what uh, the problem is is that he. I think after that, he didn't really have any career, did he? I don't know what he did. They might have like done a. A guest spot on a Magnum PI in the eighties. Ed Kooky Burns makes a return to television in Magnum. I imagine if we, if we look somewhere, else. we could find a Love Boat that he did. Yeah, he probably is on Love Boat, one of those shows, one of those idiotic shows. As a matter of fact, that, wasn't it at the the um, at the Golden Globes? I think it was Tom Hanks who said, "Who here in the room didn't do a Love Boat?" Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was the Funny. thing he did in those days. He did yep, a Love yep. Boat. Um, and the- in the future, everyone will be on Love Boat for fifteen minutes. Yeah, the agent going. If you if yeah. I, if you if you stick with me, I'll get you a Love Boat. Yeah, hey, I'll get you a Love Boat. I'll get you in blood, sweat, and tears for a month too. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. do both. Things. I often, when I watch Love Boat, I I my whole attitude was, what the fuck happened to Gavin McLeod? I used to love him on 
Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, he was amazing on Mary Tyler Moore. He's a very good actor. He played a good heavy, too. I saw him on, as a prisoner on Hawaii Five O. He played a good psychopath. Uh, and yeah, then all he, of a sudden, they, they, put, they give him the shorts, and he's making the big money, and he becomes a fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it's the end of his career. What did he do after that? Uh, he's on a couple of Jesus shows. I think he found Jesus, and then he was on some of those religious shows. And then you never saw him again. Really? Hmm. But they just love boating. Mary, Mary, we're right on love boat now, Mary. We're always yeah. storming the hurricanes, <laughs> playing rock and roll in the Riviera room, Mary. Yeah. Come to the love boat, Mary. Join me on the dark side. <laughs> That's my Gavin McLeod impression. Yeah. World famous. Well, we lost another person this week. Uh, uh, and and this will probably I'll probably be playing this next week, but uh, uh, from when we record this, we're recording this on a Friday. Um, is we lost uh, uh, Buck Henry? Oh, he was he was great. Buck Henry was great. Well, my I uh, my remembrance of Buck Henry was uh, Al Goldstein said, "You want to come with me and my wife? We're going to a slave auction." <laughs> That's cold. A night out with Al Goldstein. Um, uh, this was the kind of thing they would hold uh, back in the day where they would uh, auction off people to be sex slaves. It was a simpler time. It was a simpler time. Uh, so I go with him, and he brings his friend with him, Buck Henry. Ah. Uh-huh. All right. Um, so Buck Henry... Is um, uh, is there, uh, and uh, as as this whole thing is going on, which is a big S and M deal all the way around. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, somebody turns to him and says, "Aren't you Buck Henry?" And he looks back at him and goes, "Not tonight." Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Buck. He looked like a schmo off the street, but boy, was he funny. He, he was. Uh, we you know he. he what I didn't like is uh, in, uh, I think it was um, uh, Dateline, uh, the uh, the site for you know news in, in the business. They said, SNL regular dies. That was the headline. Oh, really? He wasn't a regular. He was on it a lot, but he wasn't a regular. Back well, back I, don't, I, I don't think that's what he was really known for. He wrote the fucking graduate for crying out loud. That's right. You know, he created Get Smart with Mel Brooks, for Christ's right. sake. Uh, you know, he wrote uh, 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 a lot of movies and, and appeared in a lot of movies and so mm, on. Sure. The least sure. of his credits, if you were to list them, was a SNL regular. When I saw that yeah. headline, I figured, I don't know, who who died? Adam Sandler died? Who died? Yeah. yeah. Probably written by a millennial idiot. So, you know, what do you do? Yeah. So I, you know, I mean, uh, that was not his greatest achievement, and uh, he was yep, he was yep. he was really terrific. I mean, as a, yeah. as a comedy oh, writer, and, you know. But uh, I always remember him saying, "Not tonight. <laughs> I'm not Buck yep. Henry tonight. Not yep. that while I'm sitting here watching people yeah. being auctioned off." Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I remember on Saturday night he played a character. Uh, some pedophile that you could never show today. It was really nasty when Gilda Radner and Lorraine Newman were playing the little kids that he was babysitting. And uh, it's, oh, it's, it's times have changed. Let's put it that way. You can't do a lot. Sure. You can't do a lot of stuff today. You yeah. can't do a lot of shit today. Yeah, the seventies were pretty wild, so anything went. But now, I mean, I, I, I'm I, stop your engines. Well, I hate political correctness for that reason. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That uh, you know. What was funny ten years ago should be funny now, and it probably uh-huh. is. But you won't put it on because it's in bad taste. That's right. It'll offend some people. Some people have to go to their safe space. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, oh, it's, times have changed. It's it's it, it, it it's uh, uh, derogatory towards women. Uh, well, fuck you. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I, you know, today, can you imagine it? Today, Henny Youngman wouldn't be able to do his act, and that that was the uh, most, that was the most, uh, what can we call it, vanilla comedian oh, ever yeah. in the history. Take my wife, please. That offended someone. You can't do that yeah, one anymore. You know, my okay. wife's so fat. How fat is she? Oh, don't make fat jokes. You can't make fat yeah. jokes. You're okay. you're a fattest. You know. <laughs> Hell, I it's like. It's over, baby. 
I remember when we had Monty Hoffman, who was rather large, and we yeah. one day we all decided on the show to do um, Monty Hoffman is so fat that jokes, <laughs> and uh, you know um, when he sits around the house, he sits around the house. That's always a, mm. the go to. But you can't do my wife so fat. Mm-hmm. So I came up with the political correct. My wife is so fat. So I will say you 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 re- come back at me. My wife's so fat. Uh huh. Now, you, now you're supposed that, to say that her birthday is no 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 how, the night, so. <laughs> no 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 no. My wife's so fat, how, and then you're supposed to say how fat? How fat is she, Johnny? Boy, you don't know how to be a straight man at all, do you? <laughs> My wife's so fat. How fat is she? That the doctor told her she better lose some weight, otherwise there'll be health problems. Oh, okay, that's a good one. That didn't offend anyone. <laughs> I mean, come on, what do you do today? I know, you don't do anything. You just watch some you watch some uh, millennial clown get up there and not be funny for ten minutes. My wife's so fat. How fat is she? She's so fat that if she wears a red, white, and blue dress on a street corner, they put mail in her mouth. Thank you. <laughs> I made that one up myself. Uh, that was my, like that, that was my own, my wife is so fat joke. Well, she uh, wore high heels and she struck oil, but I got to tell you. Yes, this is offensive, folks. Let's just be totally offensive. Well, just call me offensive. I don't give a shit. I'm 64. I earned my I don't give a shit badge the day I turned 50. You know, I mean, it's getting so... Everything's getting so, uh, what can we call it, uh, uh, politically correct and correct in all ways. Uh, I mean, I was going through this whole hospital thing. I can't tell you how many times they asked me what my name was and what my birth date was to make sure I was the person they were supposed to do this thing with. And then I couldn't leave the hospital till I had a, till I peed. Why? So if I don't pee and I get some kind of infection, you're going to get sued? You know, I got news for you. You're going to get sued anyway. Okay, so get over it. You know, but but everything's also so politically correct. I mean, I if if I it's insane. It's I honestly the believe, deep end. if I did the show I did in San Francisco today, okay, I think I'd be run off the air. Oh shit, Sam! Look at Sam, what Sam Kennison did. He he wouldn't be able to get on any stage. It would be, it's, 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 it's changed. It's changed greatly. Yeah. I wouldn't even do shows in Berkeley. I wouldn't even. In the eighties, it was fun, but then later on, it did. You get a lot of. <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with you people? Yeah. I won't even. Don't even book me for the show that's in Berkeley. I don't care. It pays a million dollars. Yeah. I'm not going to the the B word. Ooh, the B word. Yeah. Yeah. B word. Anyway, yeah. so I mean, it, it's ridiculous. The whole thing is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it's all ridiculous. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, I I just don't know what I would do today. Um, um, and, and I can't, I'm trying to think of stuff we did on the show that I just absolutely could not do today without getting heat for it. You know. Oh, let's well, say we, you know one of the old go-to things for people doing a morning show was when it was a, a really cold day. You uh-huh. you said you give away a prize to the first woman that showed up wearing a bikini. Uh-huh. You know, uh, if I did that, uh, sexist. I'm sorry, you can't do that. Yeah, you can't ask I women. can't do it. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. right. I heard had a friend at a 400 pound lesbian in Berkeley. Oh, I said 400 pound lesbian in Berkeley. Oh, we're getting cut up here. You remember the stripper I had on the air once that came on the show, and I said, so it says, must be seen to be believed in the ad for the stripper. And I said, what must be seen to be believed? She says, let me show you. And she got up on the desk and stuck her fist up her ass. Oh, my God. <laughs> Family entertainment. Now, what? how would the reaction to that be today? Oh, you'd be yanked off the air before she got, like, three fingers in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably wouldn't even be allowed to have the stripper on. How dare you ex- <laughs> How dare you exploit an exploited woman? You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just pathetic. Just pathetic. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, very, do, do you oh have any God. jokes in your act that you've cut out because they're... Oh, lots of them. Oh, yeah. Any of the, well, you don't do the gay jokes anymore. That's no good. That's not You don't do those anymore. No. So I've got a few of those out. 
and uh, a couple. Of, uh, you well, know, tell, tell me what. Here. Tell me. Tell me one of the gay jokes that you did. Oh, we're, we're doing this. We're doing this just uh, as uh, example. Okay, folks. Okay, here's the thing. I just think well, I do a little country. I have some silly country and western songs I do, and one of them, which I don't do anymore, is. Uh, and a bar up in Moose Jaw, not far from a drugstore. She sat down and took off her wig, and I leaned over and got a good look at what turned out to be a transvestite pig. You picked a fine time to tell me a meal. I've had some big shocks, and I've seen some big cocks, but this time my asshole won't heal. You see a big, big laugh, and nope, not anymore. Can't do it anymore. Well, nope, well, no, no. Well, wait, but what is politically incorrect about that? It's wrong. It's about it's about a transvestite. It's wrong. Leave them alone. They do no wrong. Leave them alone. Don't mention them. Oh, they're not called transvestites them, anymore. They're transsexual. Put them in the bushes where they belong. They're tra- I don't know. They're trans- they just, they can't do it anymore. They're not transvestites anymore. They're they tra- can't do it anymore. No they're transsexuals. Yeah. And the trans- they, yeah, the, the LS, whatever, the LSMFT community. The, L- the, the, the LSMFT community? I support them. That's right, Jack. The L- L- lucky strike means fine lesbians. Back for you, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, lucky, lucky strike me. Fine, <laughs> been, yeah, so, get happy, go lucky. Back to you, Jack. Like I wasn't being off people, today. Some people don't even know what we're talking about. Do you realize? No, I don't that? care. Uh, I know nobody knows what I'm talking about anymore. If you're less than sixty, y- yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it, my God, he did a Don Wilson reference. What's wrong with this guy? He's uh, sick. <laughs> Doing Don Wilson, talking about transvestites and Don Wilson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so it, it, I just I, I just think it's getting to be, you know. You can't make fun of him. Once again, Lenny Bruce, I don't know if he'd get arrested today, but he probably wouldn't get a lot of work today, so, you know. Well, for instance, you go back to vaudeville, okay, uh-huh. and you had what we call the dialect comedians. Oh, yeah, sure. And uh, yeah. I don't think those guys could work today, you know. Oh, how dare you stereotype Jews like that? Yeah, you're making fun of someone's accent. They're trying to speak English as best as they could. You blah, 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 blah. Uh, and those were Jews doing Jews on stage. That's right. But, you know, yeah, that's right. Uh, but they wouldn't be working today. Uh, of course, uh-huh. uh, of course, Stephen Fetchett, one of the finest comics ever to hit the screen, wouldn't be uh-huh. able to work today because that's he was right. stereotyping blacks. Although, oh, he sure. did, the thing about... About Steb and Fetch it, I always defend him because he was a great comic, and he created this character. That, hey, I'm walking as fast as I can, boss. You know, yeah, well, super, and he super, did that, super, and it was, and, it, and people laughed at it and thought it was very funny. And then all these yeah. other black comics decided, well, that's the way we can make some money. So they all imitated yeah. Step and Fetch it, and yeah. Step and Fetch it didn't create a stereotype. The people who copied him created the stereotype uh-huh. and enforced yep. the stereotype. Um, and so quit blaming Step and Fetch it. I mean, that guy was the best, you know. Yep. That's right. He's also an intelligent, well, uh, a very articulate guy. Oh, wait a minute. I, I would get in trouble for that. I'm sorry. Uh, saying that Step, uh, and, Step and Fetch it. Don't even mention it, his name. You get in trouble for mentioning the name. He Step never existed. Step and Fetch it was funny. Well, I had a thing. In the liberal world, he never existed. I had a thing that uh, you may remember this over at, uh, 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 at, at the uh, radio station, uh, uh-huh. Live 105, in which I mentioned that I thought Sam Kinison was funny, you know, and I defended Sam Kinison uh, uh-huh. and and his his jokes and so on. And uh, the gay and uh, the glad the gay and lesbian anti defamation group complained, not uh-huh. because of something I had said regarding gays, but the fact that I defended um, uh-huh. Sam Kinison. Uh-huh. And uh, they uh, they got the got an uh, uh, to see the station and and have a meeting with the station and they all sat there on one side of the desk and we were on the other side of the desk and they started playing excerpts from Kinnison's act you know not the not the lead in not the lead out but the thing yeah. he was saying all right yeah and uh, Lenny Bruce <laughs> yeah. And they're all sitting there like, you know, the Women's uh, uh, Morality Committee. The uh, Women's Extra Hymen Union. 
Yeah, yeah. And, you know, saying they, they want, I don't know what they wanted from us. And finally, I just got up and I said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, this is a witch hunt. You know, I had been, feel like I was Trump at the time. This is a witch hunt. What you're doing is you're taking a man out of context and not playing his entire act. Uh, you're complaining about a guy who is simply making jokes about the gay community that you find in bad taste, but quite frankly, it's not because he dislikes gays or because he hates gays, but just because uh, he finds everything funny. Okay? Yeah. And uh, and you have to admit there's something funny about being gay, all right? Uh, and I said I'm hey. I'm sick of this. This is censorship. I've seen it before. I'm sure I will see it again. Uh, and quite frankly, I just um, can't put up with this any longer. And I got up, walked to the door, and slammed it shut behind me. Damn, good good exit. Le- leaving the program director and the general manager looking at these people, and they're aghast. That I got ah. up and left, you know. I, I figured, come at me, come on, you know. I'll fight you, you know, yeah, because I, I've been nothing but great, good to the gay community my whole life. You know, when I was growing up, I grew up gay. I grew up gay because everybody thought I was, not because ah. I was. And uh, uh, you know, come on, come at me. Let's have a let's have yeah. a good br- brouhaha here. Yeah. And uh, eventually, um, you know, I um, I did some kind of thing where I was supposed to win a prize of five thousand dollars to be given to charity, and I I gave half of it to the gay and lesbian anti defamation league. I gave them oh, cool. uh, I okay. gave them twenty five hundred bucks and said, you know, I don't hate you guys. You know, I I'm not against you. I just I'm against your tactics, and I think they have to change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am, yeah. Yeah, well, that was that. There you go, revolutionary till the end. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, that was that was a big that was a ni- that was a nice fight. And um, <laughs> my my program director and the general manager afterwards said, "We're proud of you." That was exactly yeah, that, yeah, well, that was what we wanted to do, but we couldn't do it. You know, yeah. and what I was seeing was they were just taking political correctness, and that was an excuse for doing what ah, they did in the McCarthy era. You know what they yeah. what censorship groups have done all along. If you're for something like gay rights, that's terrific. I think it's wonderful, yeah. but don't use that as a weapon to censor people. Exactly. You know. Sounds good. Yeah. Especially, like especially comedy. They never censor comedy. There's. Oh, uh, no, there they. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there should be a law in the Constitution. It's another amendment saying, "Thou shalt be able to do uh, comedy without." Uh, Leave the comics alone. We suffer enough anyway. Leave yeah, us alone. Yeah. What, what are we going to do anyway? I mean, gay. Gay isn't funny. Huh? You know, come on, gay is funny. There's some very everything. funny you stuff. You find humor in anything and everything, but now you're not allowed to. Uh, listen, yeah. there are gay. Um, uh, comics and there are gay performers who go out of their mm-hmm. way to be extra gay because it's funny. Yep. You know. Because of the shit. I can't do my Billy DeWolf impression anymore. Yeah, he used well, to be a gangbuster. Uh, Rip Taylor. <laughs> Rip Good Taylor. example. Okay. Rip Taylor. You know. Mm-hmm. V- very funny guy, but he made his, his life actually overdoing being gay. Exactly. And you know, a very, very funny guy. Uh, so don't tell me that being gay isn't funny. You know, don't exactly. tell me being Jewish isn't funny, or that. Exactly. You know, uh, of course, there's nothing funny about uh, you know Presbyterians, but you know we'll get to that <laughs> some other Protestant. time. <laughs> Boring yourself. Yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, it, I, I just you know, I just stop it with the political correctness. You know, I exactly. I, Let's I, go back to 1979. Stay there for a while. Well, let people like Stephen Pearl do comedy. Okay? That's his job. Mm-hmm. And don't tell mm-hmm. him how to do it. All right? Exactly. And if he's in yep. bad taste and he offends you, then don't go to see him perform. Exactly. That's, that's, that's your up. your way of, of censoring him. Mm-hmm. You know? And if not enough people show up anymore, Steve may do something <laughs> and change his act. I doubt it, but he may do yeah. something <laughs> and change his act. Although you don't sing the transvestite song anymore. Wearing a jacket with patches on the sleeve and talking about the good things in life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's amazing. 
Uh, so Maybe. anyway, so everything's good out there in uh, in uh, Las Vegas. Things are good. I'm breaking. Uh, I got like, a couple of gigs coming up, yeah. and I'm going to Reno at the end of the month. I got a gig there, and I'm sitting around with the cats. Everything's nice. And uh, I got over a cold, and now I don't have the cold anymore. Yeah. Hey, so hey, so, so you're, hey, you're, you're working. That's good. That's good. I'm working. Yeah, not all the time. Enough, play right, enough right now. We'll talk to you so again. Some, going, we'll talk to you again sometime soon. I don't know when exactly because I've got all this radiation going on. Yeah, I know you guys doing. We'll, we'll talk around. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Pearl. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to see you all and hear you all and smell you all. God bless each and every one of you. Five years and still talking. This is Gabnet. The Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. There he was. There's the uh, legendary Stephen Pearl. And I hope you enjoyed him so very, very much. Uh, what am I? Wait a minute. Let me turn down my headset here. Because I hear the room tone. Yeah, okay. Anyway, you don't know what that is anyway. I don't care. Let me see here. What are we going to do? We're going to go to uh, turn on Skype. See, I, I would like to turn on Skype in advance, and it used to be that when I had it on in advance, I could keep it off and nobody could call me. And now, okay, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a whole different deal. So, uh, okay, well, I'm I'm open now. I'm open. The lines are open. And so you can call if you want to call. Uh, uh, listen, I'm not going to be here Thursday night. The reason I'm not going to be here Thursday night is we have our trial, first day of our trial, the next morning, and I have to be up really early, okay? So I won't be here on Thursday, but I'll be here back again on Friday because I figure I'll catch a nap or something, and then I can do the show. So, you know, simple, huh? Okay. The following week, I will not be here, what, I guess Tuesday and Wednesday... Wait a minute, I won't be here Tuesday, excuse me, I won't be here Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. I'll be only on on Friday night, okay? Again, for the same reason, is that I have to be there so early that I can't stay up late enough here, and that's, that's a problem. So, anyway, that's the, uh, that's the uh, uh, sum total of it. So, that, that's the way it's going to be for the next week. I'm going to be going through radiation starting on the 27th, but I don't perceive that's going to keep me from doing the show. It might make me do a shorter show or something like that because I'm just uh, too fatigued. You know, I, they say I'm going to have mild fatigue, and I don't know what that is because I'm always mildly fatigued, all right? So I have no idea what that means. Is anybody going to call me, or do I have to just say, fuck it all? Uh, I'm, I'm sure that we are able to get calls. I'm sure that we're going out there okay, I think. Yes, uh, yes, we're going out there. And it's just that nobody's calling, you know. Why do I do this? You know, I just, why do I do it? I don't know. And then I sit here and I'm humiliated by the fact that nobody's calling. And some nights it's like they all jump in at once. And then other nights it's like they don't jump in at all, so... You know, uh, uh, so what the hell? M maybe I should take the rest of the week off. Why should I just take um, uh, Thursday off? You know, yeah, we have the first day of our trial. Something I'm not looking forward to. I told my my uh, uh, lawyers that I wasn't even going to show up for it. I was getting so disgusted. I got we got a bill. Oh well, I'll talk about that later. Okay, here comes Phil. Okay. So we have Phil. Uh, let me see here. Was he in any place last week uh, that was in the first place? No, I, I was in the wet spot last week. You were in the wet he, spot last, last week. Well, let me, let me just get you on here. Okay, scuba diver. He, mm -hmm. You're up against the uh, Democratic uh, debate. What? Tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, here comes Jeff Stein. At least he doesn't care about the Democratic debate either. I don't care. I forgot it was completely on at all. So, you know, um, let me uh, see here. You didn't uh, miss anything so far. Wait yeah. a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. I, I, okay, cancel. I'm trying to 
see if where's is Stein Zeller coming up here. Here we go. I'm now, here. now let me Jeff, see. There how many we polar go. bears we died go. for that jacket? <laughs> not enough. <laughs> not enough, right? Um, no, I, uh, I, I, you know, I care so little about. I got to tell you about the Democrats. <laughs> it's they're they're a pathetic bunch of nominees. Mm. You know, I mean. Uh, what do you think, Jeff, as a Democrat? Forget it. The Republican has to keep his mouth shut on this one. Because yeah, yeah. we know what he's going to say. It's predictable. I, I could just do the, I could do the part. Okay? Yeah. I, I think uh, the only one that I'm kind of interested in is Pete. Let's forget. 75-year-old guys? Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I agree with you, but... That's not reasonable, okay? I may not be. You know, which one of these guys can take on uh, Trump? And I guess the answer, <clears throat> the only one, is probably Biden, you know? And that's pretty, that's pretty poor if we got to rely on him. I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't put my money on that. Yeah. That horse. Yeah. He's, he's too slow. He's bunch too, of malarkey. Well, you know, um, yeah, I guess, you know, uh, but Trump, Trump's going to waddle himself to an early death if he doesn't lose some weight. So you that know. would be a good thing. Well, not, not if, not if, uh, what's his name? Oh, hold on a second, Mike. I have a mat here that keeps shifting. On five years. Five. No, 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 Gabnet no, needs no, you. No, stop. Yes, Gabnet stop it. needs you to call stop our it. life. I accidentally pushed on my keyboard there. No, I was had to, I have this mat down here and it was really shifting badly, so I had to. You know. Anyway, hi. Um, no, I just you know I mean I just I just think that oh if uh, if Trump died uh, then we get by we get the uh, uh, Pence. Pence. Yeah, it's, that's not that's not an acceptable. Uh, so I would rather probably have Trump. You know, because I know what he's going to do next. Hey, is uh, Pence the English version of Eddie Money? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 I had a producer. What was his name now? Uh, and I was in England. And, um, oh, boy, I forget. Um, oh, I forget his name now. Damn it. But it was a name that when I asked a, I was making a collect call back to the United States to my producer. And, um, oh yeah, this was it. Yeah. Um, I said, uh, I'd like to place a collect call to my, to New York City, uh, to Bob Schilling. And she <laughs> said, you must be kidding me. <laughs> That's what I got <laughs> on the other end of the phone. Because in England, a shilling is also called a bob. Mm -hmm. And I suppose nobody names their kid Bob Schilling. You know, but his, this guy's name was Bob Schilling. You know, our vice president's a rapper. He could have been called Fitty Pence. Fitty Pence, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, um, you know, I mean, what the hell? I mean, I just don't think, I don't think we got anybody. I, I'm, I'm conceding the election to Trump, okay? That's it. That's too bad, but yeah. You know, for lack of a better person, you know, a good person could beat him, wipe his ass all over the map, but they don't have that person. You know? Amy Klobuchar isn't that bad. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that uh, she's not uh, a left-wing crazy like, uh, like uh, Bernie, uh, the thing I about I Warren, I don't think Bernie's a left wing crazy. I mean, if he were socialist. really, if, if he were really a, uh, to, uh, to the uh, that far to the left, he wouldn't be a senator. He wouldn't put up with that that nonsense. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, well, Putin would have thrown his support in then. Uh, but uh, and then Warren, uh, you know, every week it's a different thing. Before it was I was visibly pregnant and. And I and I got fired, and that's what principals did. And you know, twelve years before that, she said, "Hey, you know, I was pregnant. I uh, I left to raise my child. You know, th this woman can't tell the truth. You you say that Trump is a liar? 
Uh, Elizabeth Warren makes Trump look like uh, well, he's look, practicing look, I, I, for, to I, be a choir I, boy. I'm no, I'm no big fan of Elizabeth Warren. I don't disagree with her politics particularly, but I'm no great fan of hers. I, I agree with you. I think that she's terribly inconsistent. And, you know, the whole thing about I've got some Indian in me, you know. Uh, <laughs> she's an, an elitist and, and a Republican, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th I think she's a very smart lady. Uh, she is a smart lady. Yeah, yeah let her stay in school. Well, 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 the problem is, you know, look. Uh, 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 Jeff, let me bring this up to you. If Smart wins, then Trump wouldn't be president. Oh, that's true. Okay? Uh, he, he, one of the dumbest people in America. Yep. Street yeah. smart, street smart, but dumb. Okay? He has good um, intuition about things. Like you said, street smart. But, you know, when it comes to uh, whether he should involve himself in this or that, he, he seems to always have the be on the right side or the winning side uh, of uh, the right decision. Oh, you know, really? And, and, yeah. Well, you're going to like destroying, like destroying like the that. national parks. It's not destroying that. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, you're listening. You're listening to that uh, to that crap. Uh, uh, he's uh, he's no, opening no, no, up. I'm tired, really Phil. Phil, I am sick and tired of you telling me. Every time I say something like that, I'm listening to that leftist crap. Yes, you are. You know. You know no, look, I'm not. If you don't, if you don't clear some of the trees in the national parks, you know, it was Clinton that uh, stopped uh, the, uh, the the logging uh, of of national parks, and then what ended up happening is we had more fires. And uh, no, that isn't what caused more. Well, that no, that isn't what caused more fires, Phil. Well, yeah, because if you don't, yeah, if, if trees, you don't clear if, dead trees, oh yeah, no, if tree, well, dead trees, but we we clear those, Phil. We have people who maintain those national parks. But if you take away the funding to those national parks, they won't be able to maintain them. Well, you know, I I, I don't see the funding being taken away. I know Folks, that in somebody Yosemite, call. This is going to uh, be exhausting. What? In Yosemite, uh, they uh, had one uh, a group of people, for instance, running the concessions and the, and the hotel, the Awani Hotel. Now, the, the group that's in there, they're claiming isn't giving as good a service. But that has nothing to do uh, with, with Clinton. It wasn't he, his administration that mm -hmm. made the change in, the, uh, in, in who was running the Awani or who was uh, running these uh, concessions. Yeah, so what, what, what do you say? Well, you know, well, the, the service has gone down. Uh, you know, so he's opening up certain amounts of land yeah. uh, uh, to, to logging. Yeah. And uh, he's also allowing uh, uh, drilling for oil in, in certain places. Hey, it's been good for the economy. Oh, it's been good for the economy. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like we need to, we need to, to uh, you know, we, 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 like we, the whole idea, you know, he, hello, Vernon. How are you, my friend? Thanks for coming I'm by. I'm trying to, to get my headset huh? connected here. Try, thanks for coming by to try and save my ass. We can hear you. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, the headset is connected to the knee bone. The knee <laughs> bone is connected to the thigh bone. <laughs> And I heard your frustration, Alex. I thought I'd call up and we talk about prostate cancer. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> oh, Alex, did you get irradiated today? No, no, that's not till uh, two two weeks from last Monday. So what did you do today? Nothing. It, uh, nothing. I, I watched television and jerked off to porn. What? Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, do it now because I'm doing be it now later. while I can still. No, do no, 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 no. One, one thing, Alex, I was going to call about this. Okay, mm -hmm. now, Phil may be having that problem, but for the treatment that you're going through, if I'm have any example to that, mm -hmm. you won't have any trouble getting it. Yeah, but I'm also going to have the seeds too, and the seeds may do that to me. You know, Is that what the doctor said. But it may, it may. They don't. You know, it, it, the seeds uh, uh, can cause me. It'll cause me to pee a little more. You He's know. going to ejaculate marigolds. <laughs> Imagine yourself coming into bloom. <laughs> ejaculate marigolds? Yeah, That's you got seeds. You know, Ejocularity? I mean, ejaculate marigolds. He's in bloom. <laughs> that isn't as funny as my line about uh, 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 when I fart a, a nuclear cloud coming out of my ass. I think that's a better joke. 
it is funny. Depends on what side you're on. Yeah, but you had the you had the uh, you had the long term uh, radiation, which they don't do a lot anymore in towns where there are cyber knives. You know. Uh, yeah, apparently that's true. Um, this uh, company that did this was the only one in town who did it. Right. How many years ago, country? Vernon, did you get it? It was uh, six years ago. Six. Seven yeah. years ago. Yeah. And he's completely clean. He's so far, you know. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, doing my annual physical tomorrow, and the blood work was done a couple of weeks ago, and my PSA had dropped to 0. 0.33. Yeah. That's so. So that's good. Uh, I thought it was supposed to be non detectable. No, that's when if, you have if, your problem. If you remove it, my, oh. mine has been removed. Oh, okay. Yeah, mine's non detectable. No, these, his will go down. Mine will go down. Uh, if worse comes to worse and his comes back and kind of raises, they just throw hormones in you, and that takes care of it. Uh, so it, it's, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm looking forward to the first round of it. The, the seeds I'm not that in love with, only because I, going to have this idea that I've got these seeds in my prostate. You know, they've, they've turned my prostate into a pin cushion, you know, and, uh, but, uh, um, have a couple more biopsies. You'll know what a pin cushion well, is. Well, no, I'm not, I don't need any more biopsies. I've had the biopsy yeah. and they said, we're going to radiation. We're going to seeds. In fact, I'm going to seed. So, you yeah. know, it's, uh, yeah, but well, this same guy who did, uh, Rudy Giuliani. So, uh, that's the good Look news. How that the turned out. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> you know, I he have, lived. I have said to him, I've read about you, and I notice how what you know that you have a long. Uh, when it comes to seeds, you're the guy to go to, and so on. He says, Yeah. I said, You invented a lot of the processes they're doing today, and he said, Yep. And I did not mention Rudy Giuliani. It killed me, but I didn't mention Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> You know, imagine he has a big picture of him in the office when you walk in. No, he doesn't. I, you know, I, I don't think that's the only thing he wants. Rudy says, I, I don't think I, that, I was not only a successful client, I own the prostate. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, he's he, got it in a glass. Rudy, we're gonna auction that off. Rudy. Yeah, uh, but uh, he's uh, so he's the go to guy for these, uh, these, uh, uh, and I said, you're doing these seeds right after the other radiation just to make sure. He says that, yes, absolutely. This way we'll get it all, you know. So, you know, I, I, I trust him, you know. He's a, hey, Vernon? Huh? Vernon, uh, did, uh, did somebody tell you that the guy you went to was the best guy, the best oncologist or the best uh, uh, guy at this, you know, uh, bar none? Mm, not really. The, the urologist that I went to was recommended by my GP. But he was part of a, a, a urology company that basically all the urologists worked through. So, yeah. so they had a monopoly on it. Yeah, yeah, I just found that everybody says that I, I had the best surgeon or well, the best uh, you know, in the, San Francisco. The number one guy. Well, this know, is, that's what they told me. No, the number one guy at Kaiser. Yeah. That's like, you know. Yeah, well, there's only one guy at Kaiser. There's only one guy at Kaiser. <laughs> one in operation, and he's got the he's, hey, and he's he, he's there because he's got the longest finger. What? <laughs> you're gonna put me on YouTube? I'm not seeing myself on YouTube. You are. Oh, I see. You're right. You know because you know what I got to do. I have to do that, and then you will be on YouTube. I'm sorry. Hey. See, I get in. I start just, talking to just people. A voice in the in the cloud. I start talking to people, and then I I forget to switch because I'm looking over like I'm looking at you, uh, but it's it's on another thing, and oh, it's you know, I, I, it's me getting older. Okay, thank you for telling me. Uh, well, I turn seventy one tomorrow. So oh, congratulations. Happy birthday. congratulations! Happy birthday, buddy. Yeah, and he got you got prostate cancer at a time where they take it a little more seriously than you know. Well, yeah, that's a, the, the age that it was discovered. It was uh, the guy told me if I had been a little bit younger, you know, like Phil was, they probably would have removed the prostate. And if I'd been ten years older, they wouldn't have done anything. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, it, it you know, 
So that's what's happening with me, and it's, it's, I think it's going to be okay. Uh, but the side effects of, the, uh, of, of both the first... Uh, did you have any uh, r- problems with the radiation causing you to urinate more often? No. No? Because mm. mm-hmm. they say that's possibly one of the side effects of the... Uh, of the cyber knife, that and you know, and but when you put in the seeds, it, it does, I think, inflame the prostate for a certain amount of time, I, so it could Alex, squeeze against stuff. What have you checked your insurance to see if they're going to pay for this double procedure? For instance, I'm just wondering if Medicare says, Well, look, you know, you're, you're getting the radiation, and that should be enough, Phil. You know, Phil, uh, Phil yes. yes, oh, so they're going to pay. Well, we know. They're going to pay because I've I've read up on this. In a lot of cases, the two being done uh, are is very common. Uh, the only it's reason a I ask, treatment. Hmm? Yeah, the only treatment. reason I ask is uh, I had my teeth cleaned uh, before the end of the year. Phil, this is not having my teeth cleaned. Well, this is how this is this is <laughs> coverage. What are you doing? So what got, are you trying to do? I, what are you trying to do? Panic me? Yeah, I got the best. Dental yeah, you're trying to panic me. Had, right mm-hmm. now. I go in, I have the teeth clean, and they deny the cleaning. Really? And so I call them up this morning, and I said, why didn't you send me the check for, uh, you know, I, I got some insurance checks here. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, yeah. this one. No, I don't want to have to. We don't said, have to why see your didn't checks. you send me, uh, pay for the whole thing? They said, well, uh, your second cleaning was was not within six was after it was within six months of Phil, the last you're one talking, said, yeah, you're, but you're you talking a year that, that's very common with teeth cleaning and and, and teeth insurance right. if you do said, if you you're only allowed are you ready for this bill you're only allowed two a year yeah okay but so i said and I your de- and your dentist first. will say <laughs> every dentist says you've got to do it every three months right well really? four months yeah. yeah but uh what right. happened was they said uh not only was it within the six months of the last one? I said, yeah, but you get two a year. No, no, no. It's got to be six months apart. And oh. then to the day, they said. And oh. then uh, at least. And then they said. Yeah, uh, that's very that common. Was, what, is, what does that have to do with my prostate insurance? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting fucked out of $170. Well, I could get uh, fucked out of 20000 okay? Uh, yeah, well, that's why I ask you this question. What happens you know, is, what happens pay is, for a double. wait a minute, wait a minute, Vernon had it absolutely right. It's a course of treatment, right, Vernon? Yep. Well, my cleaning was a course of treatment, and they and they told me to go Phil, down south. Phil, fuck your, enough with the you teeth cleaning. I, can, you I can agree with what Phil is saying, because uh, when I started on <laughs> Medicare, they pay for a physical once a year, right. but the physical for the next year has to be a year and a day after mm. the one that you just take. Otherwise, Medicare won't pay for That's it. That's right. See? Yeah. So that was well, now, my only Now question. I'm into January. Now I'm in, <laughs> after five years on Medicare, <laughs> I've gone from having my physicals in December to the middle of January. Yeah, you move it up about a month every every year. Yeah. yeah. A week yeah. or so. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, uh, uh, no, this is a course of treatment, Phil. And, uh, they're not, and if they deny it, then my doctor won't do it. You know, but they will right. deny. They will. And then these these fuckers at the insurance company. They, oh. I said, well, I why? I told you, you, Phil. We okay. Yeah, I understand. But late. then they said to me, "Well, you got you a major cleaning, and we don't pay for major cleanings." I said, "What do you mean? I got my teeth clean. They, you know, they put some, you know, they they polished some shit. They uh, and they took a pick and they got rid of the stuff and they used a, a water thing." So mm-hmm. uh, she says, oh, well, if they use tools, that's not the kind of cleaning we pay for. I said, what do you mean? I've been getting my teeth cleaned for 50 years, 60 years. What do you mean they don't, you don't use tools? I think I got fucked again by the insurance company. Does it feel good? No, I, you know, I don't know who everybody uses, and, and, they, and they don't get fucked. But I'm using this Emeritus. Well, by the way, quickly, no quick, quickly, Vernon, look, see, there are going to be two of you. On the screen. Yeah. Yeah. And soon it'll be Kevin, but I pushed the wrong button. Well, so that's why no, we had no, two I of you. Kevin. So, I got Kevin. I got Kevin. Yeah, I got yeah, one Vernon. No, but I put I, I put oh. a, a two of them up there for a short time. Mm-hmm. So that will make up for not having you on earlier. Okay. All right. So I feel better. No, Double okay. B. Yeah. No, Double no, this B, is yeah. a, this is a course of treatment, Phil, and they will cover it. You know. All right. If a doctor says you need it, that you need it. My dentist said I needed it. 
Let's and see. you know, this check does not have uh, does not have you're the money. Not, you're not going to stop with your fucking dentist. I'm talking about prostate cancer and fifty thousand dollars in charges. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm right. not talking about having your goddamn teeth cleaned. Well, yeah, but... Uh, yeah, but... Uh, insurance. I, I All I did was think to myself, oh, hey, here we go. if you, you get radiation and then you get seeds, is it two procedures? Are these procedures within six months of each other? No, they are, two, get, they are, you know, two, they are two procedures, one of which follows the other as a course of curing the problem. All right. Well... Uh, we'll see. Well, no. What do you mean we'll see? My doctor mm. does this all the time, where people yeah. do the radiation first, and then he does the seeds. And they've always been... He doesn't say, oh, they're not going to cover you. Well, it, it'd be a decent question to ask, you know. No, uh, I don't need to ask the question. He does all that for me. He calls up the insurance and gets... there. All these uh, operations are uh, have to be pre-authorized. Yeah. Okay. So he got the other one pre-authorized the other day in just about a day, and now he's going to get this one pre-authorized. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thanks, I'm glad thanks, you're, thanks you're in asking. The midst, thanks in the midst of my prostate cancer to, to make me panic. Uh, well, hey, hey, that's what I do. This. What'd you say, Vernon? I said Kevin's having a jo- having fun with this. Yeah. <laughs> he's sitting back there chuckling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what I'm talking about, Kevin, that a course of operations is not, they don't say this operation you shouldn't have because it's not it's close enough to the other operation, right? Right. It's part of the procedure. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. part of the treatment. Yeah. I think, I think Kaiser's using Phil as a tool. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, this, this is not Kaiser. This it's is part of the tool. Meritas. He's saying... Phil, are you a tool? You sure that's not the way it's worded? He's coming in. Then, <laughs> then I, you know, I call Mr. Meyer, him. you're the tool. We can't yeah, I you. call him up, and I said, my agent said, you guys pay 90%. And they said, well, agents tell you a lot of stuff. Uh, so I am, uh, I'm not a happy if camper I, this morning. Uh, you're not, a, you're you not unusual, Phil, in that uh, if I were to go get a cleaning more than twice a year, I have to pay for the other two cleanings. I always right. have had to. Right, but the I'm only the cleaning I got was two in the same calendar year. No, You're two two in the same calendar half insurance year, and not medical insurance. That's dental insurance. Yeah, it's a whole totally different, different. It's a whole different deal to begin with. Uh, uh, dental insurance is not considered really a, a payment of services or whatever. It's uh, considered uh, uh, an adjunct to your payments. You know, yeah, they it's only not, pay fifty percent of yeah, anything. It's not the same as as having medical insurance. Well, they told me cleanings they pay a hundred percent, except they uh, took a deductible on the first one. And I said, well, why was that? And they said because it was a major cleaning. They use tools, deep deep cleaning. Yeah, deep no, cleaning, I yeah. had one of those, and they, I, it paid for it. But I, 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 I'm going to get my teeth cleaned next week, and I expect to pay the full fare on it. And the reason being. That I have a something like a hundred dollar deductible on my mm. uh, on my uh, yeah. thing, so I have well, to pay that off first before. Aren't you, you know. being a little op- optimistic? What? Why? Why would you get your teeth cleaned until you're sure you get rid of the cancer? You know, uh, my my dog's got cancer, and I, I'm not going to get her. Shall I uh, start Phil panicking? Uh, maybe yeah. I should start him <laughs> panicking. You know, I'm not going to get her. You know, it's very, it's very common that even though you have your prostate removed, because they remove the prostate, some of that sloughs off to the rest of yeah. the system, and you can get cancer in other parts of your body. Okay? I Sleep know, on that it's, one, Phil. It's actually, even though you don't have the prostate, it's still considered prostate cancer yeah. uh, mm-hmm. when it comes back, mm-hmm. if it comes back. Yeah. But they, uh, because I had it removed, I can get radiation and they say that if you got the radiation and then you have it and then you uh, get it again, the cancer comes back. Uh, the radiation doesn't work as well, and they might have to do a different procedure. Yeah, then I'm they familiar get, with that because I got the false positive. Then they give you the hormones. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember I got a false positive. Okay, all right, all right. I'm again. sure the audience is loving this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, Phil with cancer. I mean, they're wishing me the best of luck with you. They hope you get cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, 
Let's see. Look who's here. Let me see here. Let me <laughs> uh, let me go. On. Lee Presson is here. Hold on. Hello, how are you? Wait a minute, got- Lee Presson. Lee Press. There he is. There you go. Hi. That that is someone going to the dentist for cancer treatments? Is yes. That <laughs> yes. He's going to the dentist to get his prostate don't checked. Do that. That's yeah. not. That's not. They don't. That's not their specialty. That's not what they do. Uh, if they, they if if you if haircut. if you get your prostate checked at the dentist, they're really doing a deep cleaning. <laughs> yeah. See, that's why they would charge you. That's what they would charge you if they're going in, you know, from the bottom. Yeah. 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 But the insurance didn't cover that one. Yeah. <laughs> but it it uh, it uh, it, wor- it worked today. Uh, um, girlfriend said, "Take out the garbage," and I said, "I can't. I've got cancer." <laughs> and uh, that uh, that was uh, it's a good gambit you can play now. Did you ever do that with your wife, Vernon? And set her up, huh? Huh? Yeah. No. 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 That didn't work. <laughs> as, a, as a matter of fact, she had her hand worked on. Uh, on December the 30th. So we, she spent two weeks sleeping in a Lazy Boy recliner so she could keep her arm elevated. Oh, wow. So she got she got the, she got got the that bandage removed today, yeah. and now she has on the only thing a, removable, yeah. a removable brace. Yeah. But the, the whole point of this brace here is, is still to keep that thumb immobile for another four weeks. I should just, I should just call this the old people's show. Because all we do is talk about our health. Boy, I've got a t- I've got a touch of the prostate cancer, uh, you know. But I, uh, um, um, uh, I just, you know, I mean, what's amazing to me, Marjorie is just amazed. She says, "Boy, you're taking this thing really well." And I said, "Yeah, because now I know what I got, you know, and we've determined that, and now I'm going to like take the pill, as it were." And then that will take care of it. And my doctor yeah. says, yeah, not, it'll take care of it. The not knowing is what was worrying you. you know, well, I said to him, I said, hey, do you think it's spread at all? He says, no. No way it's spread. He said, did you do uh, a CT scan? Yeah, we had a CT scan the other day when I did, um, uh, when I got the, the, we did the simulation for the, uh, uh, yeah, for the it, radiation. It, it spreads, it goes to the bone. Was, and so they did, no, he did, they, they, the, did uh, they did about two or three CT scans on me. My right. doctor was there right. looking at the CT scans, not looking for, for cancer, but to see where to place the radiation. Oh. You know, but he was looking, I mean, he was looking at him. If it was going to show up, it would have shown up, you know. Did they right. find that small toy you sm- swallowed as a kid? <laughs> yes, they did. There. Yes, they did. And there were, he says he'll return it as soon as he does the seeds. Well, he's down right. there, he'll... It's almost a collector's item. Well, the thing is, Alex Bennett, welcome to Jackass. About the seeds, they put a big needle down through your perineum to get the seeds in there. But supposedly, after it's over, it doesn't hurt or anything. You feel okay, feel fine. Uh, You know, kind of like rolfing. But I'm just wondering. I mean, you got radioactive seeds in you. Isn't that going to bother you a little bit? I would imagine, no. I mean, you probably don't even know they're there. I'm probably bad. Yeah, see the next time you get on an airplane. Yeah, yeah you get a little radio Double interference. Yeah, I, wonder, yeah. I, I wonder if I'm gonna if the monitors are gonna go off. Oh, but. you know what? They're gonna use that swab, that wipe thing to uh, to okay. see if you've uh, got uh, a bomb on you. Yeah, well, I'm 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 <laughs> I, I'm like uh, sneaking a nuclear weapon on board. Yeah. You know? Well, that's if I fart. You know, and then that'll that'll do it really good. But Mark build dust. Anyway, so well, I'll tell I'll tell you what really you know got got us this week. Um, every month, Marjorie gets a bill from the lawyers, and some months it's two three thousand dollars. Other months it's hardly anything. She got one for December for thirteen thousand dollars. It's Christmas. But yeah, it's Christmas. Hey. So I wrote my I wrote my lawyer and I said, "Come on, you know we're not fucking made of money." So he's giving us a fifteen percent discount. Oh my! <laughs> yeah. Ask him if he takes coupons. And now we got the trial coming up. Yeah, so that's going to oh be uh, you know the only people getting rich out of this are the lawyers. I don't care how much anyone in this whole scenario makes out of the deal. We're not going to recover as much as the lawyers are making. I mean, there are three sets of lawyers here. And if I paid $13,000 last month, they all probably charged $13,000 last month. And, uh, you know, 
Uh, and then when they're there on Friday, there's going to be three sets of lawyers. Oh, by the way, the head of the law firm, he, he, to make me feel even better, said, I'm going to come down and be part of that trial. Because he gets 100 more an hour. No. He said, and I am going to charge it, but not to you. I'm going to charge it to uh, the, uh, the guy who rented you the apartment. I'm going to charge them and collect from them. How's he going to do that? Because he's going to claim that, uh, you know, this is payment back. I mean, we're trying to get our legal money back. You know, so he'll make it win part, he'll make it part of that. That's probably a good sign that they, he thinks they're going to win then. Uh, I think he feel. I mean, who knows? He wants to really jam them. Who knows? <laughs> I just said, you know, I just said, look. I said, I am just sick of this. I said, nobody is accusing us of doing anything wrong. Tell them the stress gave you cancer and but, you need yeah, more damages. Right, right. Now, I'm going to use the cancer back gambit. You know, I can't take this. I've got cancer, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I, I, was, uh, I was just amazed that, you know, it, it really has been a... Um, um, you know, it's been a real, a real uh, problem with this whole thing going on and on and on and on and on. And we're the only people who have done nothing wrong. In other words, nobody is accusing us of ripping them off for anything. You know, the only thing is the guy who had the apartment wants us to give it back. That's all. That's the only thing that we are even. So we've already spent close to eighty thousand dollars oh, to God. defend ourselves against. Uh, a suit brought by him uh, for us who did absolutely nothing. Doesn't that mean you're a squatter? Yes, I am. Yes, by <laughs> all means we are. And damn proud of it, too. You know. So we'll see. So, what, we'll see what uh, happens. In Oakland, California, I think it was today, yes. uh, the sheriff's department and the marshals came in and evicted three families from a vacant home that they were squatting in. And I guess they were yelling at the mayor and a number of other people. It's, it's been uh, a, uh, a political football here mm -hmm. for a little while. But uh, so anyway, these three uh, mothers with children, no husbands, were uh, put out on the street early this morning. Oh, and uh, That's terrible. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah, the house was abandoned. Yeah, I mean, I just, I'd find that, you know. So if it was abandoned, let them stay in it if they want to, you know? Yeah. Why get them out of there? So anyway, you know, so we're going through this whole thing, and I, I don't know what's going to happen. The lawyer at the, the judge, rather, at the, at the hearing before the trial that we were at said, well, would you be willing to pay twenty two fifty a month for the apartment? And I, he thought that was a solution to the problem. That isn't even what we're suing about. You know, the, the suit isn't about what we're going to pay in rent. Never has been. They just try to make them go away. The, he wanted to try and make it go away. But I'm going, I went, said to my lawyer, I said, eh, that's ridiculous. He doesn't even know what the case is fucking about. You know, I mean, it's, it's not about that. It's about the fact that this guy char overcharged us for our apartment. Was he an Obama appointee or a Trump? I don't know. He's probably <laughs> he's probably a Macy's appointee. I don't know. Yeah, Bloomberg appointee. Yeah, yeah. Bloomberg appointee. So, uh, everybody anyway. gets a big gulp. No, I love this judge. I absolutely love this judge. I'm only saying that because he holds his fate in my hands. Oh, look who's calling. I'll be a little bit on the late side, but always, you know, it's always wonderful to have her here. Hey, let, me, let me see really? here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me do that. And let me uh, let me see here. We're going to put her in the number seven slot. Uh, it's uh, it's Ms. Halstead. Let's see here. Bob Q. Kazoo. Yeah, number hey, Lee, seven. You, do you have a purple bulb hmm? uh, in your studio? Uh, among other things. Yes. Oh, okay. He, because he's trendy. <laughs> hello, hello, Halstead. How are you, Schmoody? Hello, I'm good. Yeah, you're good. Um, um, so anyway, um, so that, so we're we're having that. We're gonna it, and it, oh oh the legal the suit itself uh, the trial is gonna take four days. Oh, that's nothing. Four? What do you mean nothing? I can commit murder and it would take less. <laughs> Oh, I thought that was less than a week. What? Yeah, Lee, uh, my friend Michael Engel was at your New Year's uh, thing and put a, uh, put you up on Facebook. It was You were great. Outstanding. You know? Yeah, it was a good show. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. How you doing? Uh, oh, well, first of all, we already lost Moody. Oh, there she is. She's back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, how uh, how is how's it how's it going, uh, Lee? Have you been working at all or? Oh, oh yeah. uh, well, it's, it's <laughs> about ten hours a day. No, no, I wasn't oh, talking no, to no, about no, you. Me. I understand you're Purple working, guy. but he's a musician. They don't work that often. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, Lee. We, we did our we did our our New Year's Eve show, and then Monday January is usually our off month. Things are very very light. In January. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm enjoying some time off. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. Good. Good. I mean, after uh, all, I, I put out an album recently. Uh, da, 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 you know about that. It, what's it called again? It's called Last Request. And where can you get a copy of this if you want to buy it? You can get it on iTunes and Amazon and uh, all streaming services. All streaming services. Oh, how do you yes, get a cover? We're also, we're also on the YouTubes. How do you get a cover if you get it on a streaming service? Well, you you look at it on your screen and enjoy that's it. That's it. Yeah, so you got the it. only one with a with a jacket. Well, no, you can order. You can order if you if you like the physical media. Um, if you're like me, and I know you are exactly like me, Absolutely. you're going to a car that's. More than ten years old, in which case we've got you covered. CDs, go yes. to leepresson.com and click on jukebox. You yeah, can order your own uh, copy. Okay. I'll sign it. I'll send it to is you. Is there anywhere? Is there anywhere you can get 78s pressed? Pressed? <laughs> yes. No. Yeah, I the laundry. Don't. Well, of course, Maybe. then you then you would have to ask the question: Where do you play them? You know. I had a Victrola. Uh, you know, uh, one of those ones you wound up, and uh, it, it didn't have the horn, but it had these two little doors that opened underneath the platter, and uh, it, mm -hmm. it played. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't need electricity. It was it was uh, very That's green. That's true. You wound it up. I had one of those for a while. Yeah, very green. And how are you, Kathleen? How was your How was your weekend? It was very good. But you know, talking about recording, we have a cylinder. Oh, an Edson cylinder. Yes, Edison. we play cylinder Edison, recordings. Yeah. Really? Yep. Those are wax, aren't they? Yep. Or are they metal? Oh, yeah, they're wax. Wax. They're yeah, wax. Yeah. They're wax. Yeah, so do you have something to play on it? My brother does because he was the one that inherited all the music stuff. So we have from cylinder on. Wait a minute. In, from who? From your mother? Well, from my um, stepdad's side of the family. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And because, um, uh, uh, you know, I imagine a little piece like that is probably worth something, you know? Is, is, yep. Uh, you know, they're rare. Uh, Very rare. Especially if you've got Edison singing Mary Had a Little Lamb on the cylinder, you know, so. What happens <laughs> if it gets hot in the room? Do they melt? You know, I I Icarus uh, records. Yeah, I mean, it, it, oh, I would imagine you. I imagine they're pretty perishable. You know, yeah, but, they shut pretty easily. Yeah, but they weren't. So, they weren't. Be careful. They were wax. They were wax when they were recorded. But I think in later years, in the later years of the cylinder, they weren't. The ones that were sent out were not wax. You know, they were literally an etching of the wax. The wax was used as the medium to record it with. Am I right, Lee? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, you ought to know. You were a professional radio broadcaster. Yeah, we used cylinders back in my day when I was a disc jockey. <laughs> we had a big cylinder machine. Anybody oh, ever make yeah. a crystal radio? Remember when I, when I was a kid? Oh, yeah. you had those little ones you wound you, the wire. I'm sure, oh, Vernon, I'm sure yeah. Vernon did it. Sure. I had one. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, a cat whisker is what yeah. they used to call it sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, um, why why was it a cat whisker, Vernon? I'm trying to remember exactly. I guess because it was so it was a real thin piece of wire, so it was, you know, people mm -hmm. thought that it was as thin as a cat whisker. Oh, I doesn't see. the two wires on the on the spool come out on either side? Uh, maybe that looked like the whisker. No, that's a wire recorder, Phil. No, 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 no. But to make a uh, 
to make a crystal radio, you had to have a cylinder and you wound the the wire, the thin wire yeah, around the right, cylinder. Right, but that wasn't yeah, the Yeah, that's whiskey. not what the crystal was. There was a crystal, and then there was a, a there was a connection that it's like a diode. It was it was actually a, a, a diode that was, that was made a up tuner? of two to separate two two dissimilar metals. Uh, yeah. Well, this was way bet before Kathleen's time, so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, and I used to uh, crank my cars. I'll tell you though, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, my father, of course, did radio programs with the orchestra, uh, Eddie Fitzpatrick's orchestra out of the uh, St. Francis Hotel, and they would do this uh, this uh, radio show once a week, you know, live from the St. Francis Hotel. The, the I think there was a mural room at the Hotel St. Francis, and. Um, one day, this guy comes over with this machine, and he says, I recorded the show. And it was a wire recorder. And before tape, they had wire. And what it was was a spool of wire that went... It, was, it had the same basic um, operating theory as tape, only it did it with wire and recorded on wire. And it had uh, a magnetic coating on it, probably. It had a, it was magnetic, and it it uh, uh, it went past a, a capstan, a head or something, that went up and down like this, so that it would, uh, so all the the wire would get evenly spaced on the take up reel. You get what I'm saying? Uh, they didn't have to do that with tape because tape just went across, but it was up and down. And I remember that distinctly when I was a kid. See, this, wow. And everybody was sitting around just amazed. Wow, we can hear the radio program, you know. The and first one I ever saw was a wall and sack. Well, then and I, that well, was tape. that was later. I then yeah. had, my uncle bought one of the first tape recorders. Uh, and he gave it to me. And it was a brush sound mirror. Look it up. It's, you can look it up on, uh, on, uh, on the internet. Uh, They'll show you a picture of it. And in your apartment on well, Fourteenth well, Street, let me finish the story. Can I tell? Finish telling the story. Yeah, well, this is another recorder you had, and no, I was no, interested. No, but I, in it. I let me finish the story. Then paper. you can ask. All right, all right. Okay. And I got this thing, and it was, uh, it it was a full. It was actually it wasn't a full track, but it was a half track. But the half track went through the middle of the tape, so it was only one track tape. And um, it had a cat's eye for a VU meter, you know, so you could see the, uh, it was like this green, you know, remember those at all? Anybody remember those? The green eyes that used to, used to kind of vibrate or whatever. Right. And, uh, and it came with a reel, although I went on, I bought some of the regular tape, it came out with a reel of paper tape. Wow. And they replaced that with, uh, I could use the, the plastic because it had come out by that time. And I had this rinky-dink old tape recorder that I first used to practice doing radio, you know. In 1972, latter part of 72, and in your 14th Street apartment in your living room, you had this reel-to-reel uh, a player, I, I don't know if it recorded, but it did video. You well, actually yeah, no, had no, cartoons. Well, no, no, that was that you the were playing on your TV. No, I'd was, never seen anything like that. What do you mean? Those, that was the first uh, home, the first portable video recorder. Uh, and this one might not have been a portable. I had a portable and I had a, a non portable uh, as well. The one you had was about How the size of a wall and sack. Well, that was in a, that, that was a portable. And it, uh, it uh, recorded on a half inch tape. Yeah. And it was a helical scan, and that's what I first just shot video with for a long time. That's what we first did Midnight Blue with. I had never seen anything like that in my life. This is 1972. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. 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 And uh, that was slowly, uh, I, to this day, I cannot play those tapes. Well, because you, Do you well, still have the machine? No, I got rid of the machine a long time ago. Because I found that once I tried to put the tape in the machine, uh, it wouldn't play because it would get stuck to the helical scan because it had lost its lubrication. Oh. I'm sure but you know what that's all about, worked. Phil. What? Yeah. In 72, it worked. I was amazed by that thing. I'd never yeah. seen yeah. anything like that. Yeah. But, um, and then we went to uh, a three-quarter-inch video cassette. 
uh-huh. uh, which was the professional medium at the time. And then uh, then everything went to like VHS and then Betamax, Betamax first, then VHS, yeah. then uh, uh, now it's I don't need any of that. I'm recording this right now on uh, on on a on hard a drive, you know. So. Can I ask you a question, Alex? Yeah, sure. When you worked at the radio station. Did they ever make? Did they keep master tapes of all the shows you did and the other artists? When? They like in them. the early seventies? Would they? In well, the seventies? Nah. I'll tell you what happened. You used to have. You used to record a, an hour show on a reel this big. Okay. Okay. So if I wanted all four hours of my show, I'd have to take home four of those reels. And they were pretty expensive at the time. So I only saved stuff that was really important, like the John and Yoko interview back then, okay. things like that. Uh, so you I had to take the reel home and copy it then? You could make a copy of it, or would they give it to you? No, they gave it to me. You know, oh, wow. They didn't care. In a lot of cases, they didn't care. But if I were to then take every show I did home... Yeah. And keep it in my apartment. That'd be cool. Yeah. Before not too long, I would have to move out of that apartment because I, I wouldn't have I mean, enough just room. Imagine if it would really. I mean, I know it's probably so hard to take so much, but imagine if you did have some like a. That's probably like because you can't get it back though. You know, I wonder if they. So they never kept any. Do of you know? Messages. I got to tell you, I have a lot of people who have been I've sending me it. stuff they recorded at home of my show, mm-hmm. and I've recovered some amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, what's it called when they only record the things that you say, and just maybe a second or so of the out uh, the what's what's going on? Well, it used to be ca- it used to be called a skimmer tape. Oh, uh, it's uh, it's really called uh, what do we what do we sound call check it? or uh, yeah, air check yeah air check. Okay. And and what would happen? Uh, this happened at uh, at at, at uh, in at the. Uh, KILT in San Francisco, uh, Live 105, that uh, we had a machine that every time you turned the mic on, the machine would start. And when you would turn it off, it would stop, which was pretty cool. You know, then you didn't use up a whole lot of cassettes. Tape. Although you remember all the cassette tapes I had at my place, uh, um, Kathleen. You remember, you remember all the tapes I had of the shows, the cassettes. You know, yep, and um, and and they were starting to that was pretty good in most cases, except uh, one morning I had um, uh, uh, Tony Bennett on the show. Uh, I had Tony Bennett on the show from New York, from a studio in New York, and he sang three numbers, hmm. and I don't have any of them because I kept turning the mic on and off, <laughs> so it didn't record. The musical parts, you know. All I have is the part where I talk to them. So. Oh, that would have been still good. Oh, you have the interview? Then? That would be nice. Some, somewhere. Somewhere. I don't know. It's I a, had about 10 boxes, good-sized boxes, of your 8-track, uh, eight, uh, eight 8-millimeter uh, eight uh, videos. You, you had a bunch of porn on 8-millimeter, and you had me store it for about a year or so. 8-millimeter? Um, yeah, they were they were reels. I mean, you you could look at them. Maybe maybe they were bigger than eight millimeter, but I they look like eight millimeter. You must have gotten that from me. somebody else because they never had. No, those. no, no. I dropped them back off in your apartment in Sausalito when no, I got rid of them. All I ever had on uh, for porn is on tape. Yeah, well, uh, maybe this stuff was just you know standard porn, not stuff you did. I didn't collect that kind of stuff. It was too expensive to begin with. Who wants? Uh, who who wanted boxes film? of them? Who wanted film? No, I didn't have boxes. I had boxes of tapes yeah, of that well, stuff. Maybe there was a few of them in there on the top. I never looked inside. Phil, I never had any porn films. Yeah, you did. I never did. No, you no. must be thinking of some other guy. No, it was like 10, <laughs> 10 boxes. Kathleen, <laughs> did I ever have porn films? <laughs> what is he doing? No, you're quiet tonight. Who's that? No, I'm having some w- really weird activity in my house oh. what do you that mean? I cannot explain. What do you mean weird activity? UFO? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. You have sun. Hmm? I don't know. 
What was that? Mm. <laughs> no, because you're just really quiet, like you're you're uh, you're concerned with something else. Oh, very much. Oh, um, wow, wow. Well, I hope it's nothing serious. Got any mace know. or? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, strength? it's unexplainable. <laughs> yeah. Okay, she said it's unexplainable, Phil. I've learned yeah. long ago with her never to go further than that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, but anyway. She'll body slam you. Hmm? She, you'll get body slammed. Uh, let me ask Well, Vern. it's hard to body slam something you can't see. Oh, okay. Uh, older guys? Yeah. I don't know. My timer went off on my oven, and it's not set. No. Oh. Oh, really? How does that happen? But this is typical for me. You've been mm -hmm. listening to Lee's album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Inside joke. Anyway, uh, again, Phil, you can stay out of this because we know what you're going to say. Vernon, yeah. what, what do you think about the, uh, the, 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 you know, they had another debate tonight, which I didn't watch. I don't know if you watched any of it. The, um, I watched part of it. Yeah. Is, and, is and anybody? The thing I noticed. Yeah. The, the thing I noticed was that uh, the, uh, all six people on the stage seemed to be bending over backwards, not to criticize anyone else on the stage. <clears throat> well, why? Hey, tell me, Biden doesn't look like Walter from Jeff Dunham. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know why Tom Steyer was on that stage and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Yang was not. Because he qualified. How did and this Yang guy didn't. qualify? He, he, he's, you know. He, because he's got, he's got more money that? than Yang, I guess. Yeah. You know, I can't, you know. It, 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 you have to talk to the Democratic Party, Phil, because uh, they're the ones who set the rules. Well, maybe he donated. But anyway, uh, well, it's more than just that. It's more than that. You have to have a certain number of donors, as well as polling a certain percentage, in uh, you know, during a certain period of time. Then you would think Bloomberg would be there. No, because he nobody he how many Bloomberg has one donor. <laughs> yeah, he has one donor first of all, and secondly, uh, his percentage is so low as to not even be on the map. Because if the trouble the trouble with Bloomberg is all he's been doing is running fucking ads, but he hasn't been campaigning at all. He hasn't been going out and pl pl pressing the flesh or you know making his case to the public and whatever. So uh, you know if he runs any more ads in California, it, it, you would think that he's the new cars for kids kit a guy. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I mean he no, he he's, he's bought all. He's, am I right, Kevin? Kevin's giving me that. You know, he's going to run a super buy. What? Too. Yeah, he's running. He runs. Oh, it's got to be fifteen minutes an hour at least. Yeah. 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 And and he's on sixty minutes every week with his ads. Oh, between him and Steyer, yeah. You know what yeah. he should do? Bloomberg run an ad, and every time at the ad says. Donald Trump is a major asshole still. <laughs> I approve this. He, that's what he says. <laughs> I just make a cracking joke on him. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, Actually, you he's know, a he bought a 60-second spot on the Super Bowl. On the Super Bowl, yeah. Heard Ten he million dollars. Yeah, money's no option. I can't get Boy, it. I, I wish I it. had that kind of fuck you money. God <laughs> damn it. You have a Bloomberg <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah. yeah but see, he earned his money the old-fashioned way, Phil. He earned it. He didn't give it to him. It wasn't that's given true. to him by his daddy. Right. Yeah. That's hey, true. you know, a lot of guys earned it. Uh, the guy from uh, Microsoft, Bill Gates, he earned it. Uh, you know, uh, the Facebook kid earned it. Okay. But uh, they, you know, they, okay, they got fuck you money, and they're uh, and they're spending it. But I don't think that these guys are going to. You get know anything. something? Trump could have never run a campaign like Bloomberg is. He didn't have that kind of money. He got it for free. Yeah. He didn't have that. Yeah, he got it for free. The the press mm -hmm. gave it to him for nothing. Yeah. That was oh, another pissed. And that other company that works for him called Russia. Yeah, Russia. By the way, did you hear yeah. the latest that uh, that uh, the whole we wondered where this whole notion that Biden's son was doing something inappropriate in the Ukraine. You know where that started? From Russia. Putin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. Putin started that and uh, Trump, I guess, uh, played into it. Yeah. The Russian disinformation campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. 
You know, your 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 boy is a is a is a uh, agent of the of the of the Russians. Basically. Oh, comrade, you should be very happy with that. It's a puppet. It's a puppet. red diaper baby. <laughs> I've never, you know, you always go, go with that, and I got to tell you, I've always been against communism. Never liked communism. Thought it was a yeah. bad idea. You know, but I do I like socialism. They were saying commune. I do, commune. I do like socialism. Yeah. You know, I think socialism is fine. I think we, we as a society, owe it to each other to take care of each other. That's yeah, just, uh, that's just what neighbors do for each other. Yeah, Venezuela worked out pretty good. Socialism wait, is wait, 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 spend everybody Wait a minute, stop, money. Phil. Well, wait, why? Because it's true? Why did you come up with the Mary. Venezuela? Wait, wait, wait. Go, who said that? Sweden. Oh, there's 32 other developed countries that aren't us. Sweden, Denmark. Um, um, yeah, and they're all going Norway. Switzerland, all going Norway. Norway. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 they're certainly no Venezuelas. Yeah, well, it's also a very small country. You also, Venezuela, you also, look, you also, Phil, 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 you also forget the one thing. Number one, Venezuela, Venezuela isn't that socialistic to begin with. Secondly, it's a dictatorship. There's a difference with that. When you've got, uh, you know, so there's a little bit of socialism in there, but it's a dictatorship. Whereas most of the other countries that have socialism aren't dictatorships, and they're well, doing just fine, Phil. And the other countries that you failed to mention, like Andorra and uh, the Vatican and uh, Monaco, uh, those would work out really well as socialized uh, countries as well, you know, <laughs> because they're, they're the, a speck on the map. Yeah. Canada? No, no. I said Mar Monaco. Don't, don't, don't uh, even, Vatican, don't, don't even pay and, attention to him. Anyway, I'm so, mentioning socialized medicine companies that aren't a speck. Canada. Canada? Yeah. England. Well, England. None of them doing that well. Wait a minute. Not uh, even, not uh, even oh. the prince. Oh, oh, and we're doing, and we're doing that well. Yeah, not even the, the Prince Harry. He wants out. Meghan Markle. She's out. She's already in Canada. Why do they want out, Phil? The socialized medicine isn't any good. I see. No. <laughs> <laughs> they, can't, they can't stand the mom in law anymore. The royal family can't get health care. Yeah, really. <laughs> Who was laughing? There was somebody laughing at that. That would have been me. Huh? Lee. That was oh, me. Oh, oh, that was you. Uh, oh, Alex so tells everybody they're not allowed they to laugh at my it. jokes. <laughs> No, we're not. It's not that they're not allowed to laugh at your it's jokes. We just think funny, less man. of them if they do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. anyway, so who would you say is uh, uh, Vernon is the best possible candidate as you see it right now, or is there one? I say there isn't one, and I'm frightened about that. Right. As I as I see it right now, if you're, it depends on what you mean by the best possible candidate. If you mean the best possible candidate running for the Democratic nomination who could beat Trump, mm -hmm. who would, would that be? Be Biden. be Biden. It would be Biden. Okay. How about you, Kevin? And How do you? I like no, I like no. Pete Buttigieg, but Pete Buttigieg has problems with people of color. Okay. They won't vote for him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Kevin? I mean, do you feel the same way that it's you know? I've come around to the fact that the only bet they've got is Biden, but I don't know that that's a good bet either. You know, that's I just exactly the way I feel right now. I mean, I just don't think there's anybody out there. How about you, Tony? Who do you think? You, you know, I can tell you right now. I I know Warren is. I know. I know it's Scooby Doo, but besides Scooby Doo, besides Scooby Doo, besides yeah. we only got on four legs, only two. Yeah. You know, I think you're right here. I think it's going to be Biden or Bernie Sanders. I, and I don't think you're right. I don't think Biden's going to win. To me, he could, but I, I don't know. I, I think he's going to. You know, I'm going to tell you somehow. I really think. I think it's going to be a landslide. I think Trump's going to win. No, a I don't landslide. think it's going to be a landslide, but I think it'll. Can I say something? I don't think any of them are going to wind up as the nominee. I think it's going to be a brokered convention, and they're going to bring in some white knight from outside. I, I don't know. Last who time they going had to... that, they had a riot in 1968 in Chicago. By the way, yeah, I, I, I've been watching a um, I've been watching a, a 
14 part, no, excuse me, 16 part documentary on the history of film on Hulu, which is spectacular. And they're covering directors and films from all over the world and from various eras and so on. And Kathleen, when she had her hood on for a moment there, looked like the, the, uh, the um, uh, from the Seventh Seal, the um, um, Death. Death. Yeah, you yeah, look like death. <laughs> you had you had your hand up like this, and you had the hood yeah. over you. So you don't yeah, think there's yeah, going to be a yeah. brokered convention? Do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Don't smile. You can't smile. I death doesn't like smile. Well, if you're black, it'd be Trayvon Martin. <laughs> what? Oh, no. If she was black, yeah. she'd be Trayvon Martin with the hoodie. You know. Just yeah, his death, a, his death was a his death was a hoot, funny. wasn't it, Phil? <laughs> Trayvon Martin, the guy that got killed. I know, we know, Martin, know. we know who Trayvon Martin is. Three times, we know who Trayvon Martin is. And by the way, by the way, just because you explain a joke doesn't mean we're suddenly going to laugh at it. I, 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 it was beyond <laughs> and, laughing. And, and if you have so. to explain them, they aren't a joke. Well, maybe it was too old uh, for uh, most people to. And the only you know, time you don't Trayvon have Martin. to explain a joke is if it's true. Okay. For what Trayvon Listen, Martin did not wear a hoodie. Phil. So everybody that has a ho wears a hoodie should get shot to death. Yeah, that's that's kind of bad. Yeah. No, it's yeah, doing the Trayvon. I don't know if they want to get shot to death, but uh, it it happens. You don't know if they want to get shot to death. I yeah. think he doesn't I, want I to get shot. I think it's a death. pretty clear I'm, I'm, guess. That they Trayvon Martin don't want to get shot to death. He grabbed the guy's gun, or at least that's what the guy who's still alive is saying. And uh, you believe that yeah, motherfucker? Right. Huh? Yeah, well, get a bigger yeah, shovel. Yeah, yeah he must be telling shovel, the truth. Get a Phil. bigger shovel. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I guess on the phone. Yeah. Get a bigger they, shovel, Phil. You're really digging it now. You're no, really... no. They they listened to the he whole thing it. on the phone. He called nine one one while they were fighting with the the, the two of them. This is fighting. a new format we've come up with. Fun with racists. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. That, a all of now. a sudden, beep, it's a racist beep, thing to wear beep, a hood? Beep, <laughs> beep, <laughs> I'm staying out of it. Yeah, I know. I know. Let's so go back to who can beat Trump. Who yeah, can beat Trump? Trump? Who can beat Trump? Trump? Yeah. You know? Nobody's I'll tell you, it's going to be a turnout issue, as far as I'm concerned. It's going to be turnout. And if the yeah. Democrats can't get the turnout, then I think Trump... Has a it very really good shot of winning it, again. could we say that it doesn't matter who the Democrats run? It's a matter of how much the Democrats want to vote Trump out, and they'll just I vote for so. anybody. Let me finish, Phil. Yeah. Want to vote Trump out enough that they will get out in sufficient numbers to do it? Because I mean, That's we had a we had a cool. kind of a canary in a coal mine the other night when Jason yeah. said that his people, where he works, are all people who voted for Trump. And they're now saying they're not going to vote for him. Now, that doesn't mean that then That's they are. Michigan. Well, they, they may, may say it and go in and flip the well, switch. Well, no, they may stay home. That could be. That That's the point. That's the problem. 10% yeah. yeah. of Bernie voters uh, voted for Trump in the last election. Really? That so, much? So they didn't go over to Hillary. 10%, you know, I mean. Hillary, I, Phil, to begin with. Let's not even talk about Hillary. I said it at the time. I will say it now. She was the worst of all possible candidates. No, I thought, you thought campaign. Trump was... Boy, my, was Vernon? She ran a terrible campaign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She ran a she bad campaign. She ran, ran a terrible campaign. She lost in Wisconsin. She lost yeah. in Michigan. She lost in Pennsylvania because she didn't campaign there. And she also, she was going to win going away. Well, well, no, had, no. She, she actually, she, she actually lost. A, a, she lost a one election, if she had played it right and done it right. But she didn't. She was a terrible candidate. Now, I don't think that Biden would be as terrible a candidate. I don't think, for hell, I don't think Elizabeth Warren would be as bad a candidate. Yeah. Um, Agreed. But right I, now Biden is up double digits in those three states I just mentioned. Biden is ahead of Trump in double digits. Yeah. So I mean, the most it, of them are. Well, you I know, heard, uh, Wisconsin was only four percent, and it was five. Well, you last you week. probably were watching Fox News, and that was one of their uh, polls. No, I don't remember uh, which one it was. Do but, they have uh, a, Do they have the map yet for Biden versus Trump? Who would win right now, or is it too early? 
like you know when they do like the states like do they do they do that breakdown like who well they don't know who the opponent is but i wonder what's the badger state what 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 is that actually uh, is that wisconsin yeah. Okay, I, I guess yeah. they're saying that uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, he uh, they have to, he has to win that. Trump has to win it for uh, him to win election. Really, uh, that's yeah. the key state. Uh, according what to whatever I was listening to. Was uh, let's see here, polling data. This is polling data uh, from um, uh, the various polls, um, and this is Trump versus Biden. Okay, okay. Uh, IBD TEIPP. Who's that poll? I never heard of them. I don't know. But uh, Biden's up two percent. Emerson, is, he's up four percent. He's up plus four. Excuse me. Okay. Um, CNN, he's up plus five. USA Today, Suffolk, Trump is up plus three. Fox News, are you ready for this? Uh, What's well, the big gap? Yeah. Stand by. Biden plus seven. <laughs> and and Quinnipiac, Quinnipiac, Biden plus nine. How Biden. old are those polls? Uh, this poll is. Uh, let me see here. Got to be uh, at least fifteen minutes. Uh, I just, I just, it's on real clear politics, so it's got to be right up uh, as close as you can be at this point. You know. Uh, so, uh, polling data. Uh, uh, where, where? What are all these? I'd rather whole, Trump be the underdog. There are a whole bunch of that will wait, keep you guys. They're home. all punch a bunch of others, <laughs> Phil, and of all of them, of all of them, and they've got to be about fifty listed here. Trump is only plus in three of them. Holy moly! And in some of them, exactly. he's as far back as ten, eleven. Do I see anything higher than that? Twelve, thirteen, <laughs> if for Biden. During the 2016 election, they all said Trump had no road to victory. Well, who's president? Well, now they know what to look for. 77,000 votes in three states. He's that's president. all it took. That's that's how the game is played. Well, now they know. Now they know. Let's change the game, Phil. Let's uh, elect by popular vote instead. Hey, let's claim we're all German shepherds. And this way we can pee oh. on, uh, on uh, 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 Trump. Uh, yeah, light stands. Yeah, let's pee on Trump. Yeah. <clears throat> so then, anyway, uh, states that he's uh, currently Trump's leading in Texas. Uh, uh, what is it? I, is it Idaho? I guess it's Idaho. It's uh, Mississippi. Mississippi. You know, Florida. Uh, I knew in Idaho. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but uh, it uh, doesn't look. Uh, it 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 kind of looks, you know, like Biden at least is their best bet. I I don't think that uh, uh, if I went, uh, let me see here. There's a there's another. Let's see, Bob versus Biden. Um, uh, let me see here. Oh, oh, let me see here. How about Pennsylvania? What what do you want to look at? Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Florida. Texas, you know. Anyway, let me go back and see who who versus would work for on others. Uh, versus Biden versus Bloomberg. Well, here comes Trump versus Bloomberg. Uh, again, who New Yorkers? Blue, no, these aren't New Yorkers. These are taking. Well, no, these no. Are, Bloomberg and Trump. Yeah, tr Bloomberg plus five. Bloomberg plus six in Quinnipiac, but plus five is in the Fox poll. Uh, USA Today is the only one that seems to be predicting uh, a win uh, over anybody else with uh, Trump. Uh, right. If we go, uh, let's see here. I wonder uh, what, uh, how, uh, let me see here. I'm looking to see, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. Um, is there a paper called the U.S. Sun? No, not that I know. Um, uh, who's the guy from Australia that uh, uh, Murdoch? Mm -hmm. He just he just started a new uh, a new newspaper called the U.S. Sun. Mm, good. It's probably the American version of the Sun. Yeah. For versus, uh, let me see here. Versus Warren. Yeah, I was just thinking here we about go. What 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 would the transition be from Trump to somebody else? 
Uh, <laughs> I think he would just fuck everything up before he they left. They would take That's all the like, T's yeah, off the keyboards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> in in a in polling for Elizabeth Warren, empty the fuel tank and the helicopter and everything. Fox yeah. says Warren would be plus one. Quinnipiac Warren plus seven. Trump is plus A in USA Today, and Trump is plus one in IBD TIPP. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Itty bitty teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Yeah, yeah. O P P N U N O M E. Trump in one of those. And the itty bitty titty club. <laughs> what about our number from uh, people from uh, from New York who used to be the mayor? Uh, yeah, he just read those. Bloomberg. I thought Bloomberg. Yeah, yeah. Bloomberg could beat what him too. Bloomberg? Bloomberg could beat him too. Well, you know, Bloomberg. See, for those people who are voting for Trump because they say, "Well, he's got money, so he knows how to make the economy." Blah 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 blah. Well, if it came to a pissing match between who's got more money, it's uh, it's Bloomberg who's going to have to pick up lunch. Bloomberg has no personality. You know, I mean, if you if Who's you think that watching paint dry, Phil, is you want to feel good about Bloomberg? He's a Jew. Uh, you know, I, so was Bernie. Uh, and, you're a self-loathing you know, Jew, Phil. Jew you're a self-loathing Jew, Phil. That, that if you don't like Bloomberg, you, they don't get more Jewish than Bloomberg. I would like to see one that's pro-Israel. And if he's not going to be pro-Israel, then. Off to the and shower. you know what I have to say about that? Pro Jewish without being. Pro you, know, you know what I have to say about that? Fuck Israel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. as you know. I think I'm, Phil, before you uh, mention that, I think you want to go to Israel first. Yeah. Well, I've uh, I've seen it on TV. Yeah. It must well, be true. Go, go out there and see what it's really like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of these days. Yeah. Uh, I train with a lot of those guys. Yeah. So. Anyway. I worked there twice. Yeah, yeah. Did you like what did it? You think of, what did you think of Israel? Yeah, yeah it's okay. Well, it's well, it's strange. It's it's not the United States. The guys I talk to say it's a very tough life that you're just trying to survive. Nah, yeah, I wouldn't say that. People, people that I saw were working. They were and doing things are expensive. They said very expensive. You know. Well, nobody nobody talked to me about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, even getting getting a job is sometimes tough there too. So it's uh, it's it's not well, it's not that expensive for Netanyahu because he's getting payoffs. But that's you know, well, you can't eat cigars. Well, maybe you can. But, <laughs> <laughs> but a lot cigars of people and champagne. live on on kibbutzes. Yeah, which are which are pretty economical. But yeah. those are all young kids. You live in a farm. It's really it's, yeah. You got to work. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah I, I own you my know, own I, business, so I don't have to work. <laughs> I make other people do it. You make other people work. Yeah. I'm yeah. the overseer. How do you get such shitty um, insurance, health insurance? <laughs> uh, well, many, many years ago, I had really good insurance when I was married. And uh, one of my employees that came to work for me says, hey, I want medical insurance. I said, well, what do you want? And he says, well, I've had Kaiser. I want Kaiser. So he got Kaiser, and I paid for the Kaiser. And then when I got divorced, I had nothing. So I said, oh, I'll get the Kaiser, too. And uh, so my guys have been on Kaiser since 2003. Well, as Bubbles used to call it, doctor-assisted suicide. But he has <laughs> Kaiser. Yes, he does, as a matter of fact. And I, I said to him the other day, uh, you know, you better hope they never heard that joke from you. Yeah. <laughs> because. Uh, well, with the size of his audiences, I'm sure they haven't. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, it's, you yeah. know. So uh, I, I, um, let's see here. Has anybody. Uh, how about you, uh, Lee? Any, any idea who could possibly beat Trump or. And I Lee, up do you have Kaiser? For, what? Huh? He's Biden good. is uh, Biden. What is he? He's like a block of wood. He's he's, he's got nothing really. He's Paint not dry. there. He's just he's well. Just, he's not a block of wood, but he's close to it. He's balsa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I he was. I don't know. I don't know if I... One of Jeff Dunham's dummies. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't yeah. know if I if I dare hope for Bernie, but if he could if he could pull ahead, I think he could really do some damage. By, by the way, did I ever tell you my Jeff uh, did I ever tell you my Jeff Dunham story, Kathleen? No. Oh. So I'm doing a a, 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 a like a show, a TV show at the uh, the uh, uh, I can't remember where the old Waldorf, I think it was called. Uh, what was what was the club down on uh, that they had that Bill Graham had the, uh, the big uh, one on Fillmore? The, Fillmore. No, it wasn't the Fillmore. Oh, oh the one on Mar off Market or down by the Civic Center? No, 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 uh, no, no, uh, no, the old no, no. The old Waldorf. Well, the old Waldorf. Well, yeah, gangs, I think so. Boarding house. The, um, uh, uh, I don't remember uh, the others. Well, anyway, it was a place where we did comedy tonight. Laugh Factory, Chuckle Hut, all the great old... There, we, we did comedy clubs. tonight there. Great American Music Hall. Great, no, 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 it wasn't there. Yeah, that would have been. That could have been. No, it wasn't it. Better. I know the Great American Music Hall because that was my homestead for all my shows. You know. Is that that's the one near Civic Center? N no. What's the one oh. near Civic Center? There isn't one near Thank Civic you. Center. Yeah, anyway, really let's not spend all night with this argument to a bunch of people don't even know the clubs in San Francisco. Anyway, no. I was doing this show out of this club, this TV show out of this club. Uh, I think it was doing the warm-up or something like that, or the announcing, I can't remember. And uh, Jeff Dunham was on the show with his, with your the puppet, Walter, is it called? Oh, right. Yeah. And so now they decide, can we take a picture of you and Jeff? Uh you know, for our for our files and for publicity, and I said sure, and I'm sitting there, and uh, uh, he he's got me. I'm sitting here, and over here is Jeff Dunham, and in the middle is the dummy. And Jeff looks over at me, and he says, "I understand you don't like prop comics." And I looked over at him, and I said. No, it's not prop comics I don't like. It's ventriloquists. <laughs> Jeff doesn't react. Blank stare. The dummy looks over at me and bares his teeth at me. That's awesome. That's like something out of the movie Magic. You know, I mean, it's just scary. Oh, yeah. The murder mystery. Yeah, yeah. Imagine you start having a fight with the, with the puppet thing. Yeah. I don't know. I just, uh, I, I never, I don't know, ventriloquists are, uh, 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 Slayton told me about a time he was working at a club, and in these clubs they have these uh, these comedy condos. In other words, rather than put you up at a hotel, the, who's calling me? What is Irv Jackson calling for? Yeah, Irv wait a minute, hold Jackson. on a second. He's got stuff. Y yes, to Irv. Well, I don't care because I'm doing a show right now. Hi, Irv. Don't you know that? Everybody say hi to Irv. Hi, Irv. I mean, I will. You're you're logged in. Well, you're logged in. You're logged in. Hold on a second. Hold on, folks. <laughs> I'll come on to ourselves. Just don't move anything. Don't move anything. Don't move anything. Okay. <laughs> don't move anything. Okay. Take the modium. Now. I know. Now try and move, just your, and try and move stuff around. Go ahead. <laughs> there, see? It's moving. See? See? You're, you're, you're th huh? Did you... Huh? Everybody put your head down. Uh, yeah, okay, well, I'm doing a show here. <laughs> uh, you, no, I, meant, I sent you an email saying Thursday I wouldn't be on. Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me now? Okay, bye. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I sent him an email saying I wasn't going to be on Thursday, and he misread it. Oh, I guess wah, Tuesday wah. looks like Thursday, I would imagine. Anyway. Hey, out of the four people from California here, how many of them have Kaiser? Do you? No? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I want to live. Yeah. He's got yeah. this insurance where you got to throw him I'll give you what bubble, I'll, you give, guys I'll give you Bubbles phone number. You can bond with him. <laughs> I got it. 
You know, I I I, I don't understand, uh, Phil, why uh, you would have trouble with uh, Kaiser. They're such wonderful people. I used to go to Kaiser when I was a kid. My parents belonged to Kaiser. My father not, died at Kaiser. Kaiser. My father, my, my father died at Kaiser. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that 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 certainly was a help. Um, well, you don't belong to job. Kaiser, do you, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, 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 no. Uh, 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 our, uh, oh, boy, my mind. Come on! I'm so fucked up. I'm so fucked up. It's the gold you in your You sound prostate. like my son. Huh? <laughs> Wait a he minute. He hasn't got the gold in there yet. Wait a minute. Lee, press on. That's it. Lee. Hi. Lee. Lee, you don't have Kaiser, do you? Medical. I'm a jazz musician. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get Medical? Nice. Uh, Wouldn't you get Obamacare? Do you have some? Uh, same thing. Yeah. But I mean, how do you? You're too young, aren't you? Me? No. How old? No, I'm in my fifties. Al. It's all. It all depends on how much you make. Yeah. If yeah. you can hide enough of your income, they'll <laughs> pay. Oh, right. he's he's, he's, a, he's a musician. Right. I'm broke. Yeah, I'm a I'm a musician. I don't make enough money for real insurance. I have medical. But, but uh, still, even with the medical, you, you don't get to choose what it's, system. It's you not want. metal yeah, cow, Phil. Nope, it's medical. I go where they tell me. But still, oh. thanks to the Affordable Care Act, I'm insured for the first time since 1990. See that, so Phil? Thank you, President Obama. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, President Obama. We and love you, President, Vice President Obama. President Biden. Yeah, him too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he said it. This is a really a big fucking deal. Yeah. <laughs> BFD, sure it is. Yeah. He uh, hasn't, Biden doesn't know that every mic is a live mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, neither well, does uh, neither, uh, uh, but Trump does, and he still says bullshit. Right. <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, do you really like a president who sends that kind of message to the youth of America that they can use dirty language? What else is new? What? Obama I, never swore. I learned all my dirty language as a little kid. But not from presidents yeah, of the United <laughs> States. <laughs> you know, I went from wee wee and pee pee to, uh, you know. <laughs> to what? Uh, well, to the curse words. Every mic is a live mic. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, my favorite yes. word is okay. fuck. Be my favorite word is fuck because it is a word that you it, it you use it. You know, it, it is a useful word. It is no, there's no other word that describes that particular thing. You can't use a singular word to to uh, affect that kind of thing. You get what I'm saying? In other words, it you, what I I'm going to make love. It has several meanings, too. Yeah, yeah. Hey, when my girlfriend, uh, I would say, hey, you want to fuck? And that was the end of it. I got nothing that night. Really? <laughs> you know? uh, but if you said it, oh, I'm, yeah. Well, I'm, all I'm saying is, is fuck is a Screw, utilitarian bang, word because slam, it's the only single plow. word you can use to describe that action. Okay? How about intercourse? That's that's not an active oh, verb. That's God. a noun. Uh -huh. We're looking at active verbs here. I'm sorry. I've never had intercourse with a woman in my life. Except when we were discussing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yes. You See, know. Kathleen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think he's digging it kind of deep. Hmm. Well, I mean, would you describe what we had at one time as intercourse? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. See? See? Um, okay. Intercourse is when we sat down and discussed stuff. <laughs> you that's know. Isn't that oral sex? That's, that's oral sex, yes. When I talk dirty to you, that was intercourse, it. right? <laughs> oh, I forget, your, is your son watching all this? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, but, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, uh, uh, just tell <laughs> your son, we, we, never, we never touched each other. The whole time I knew your mother, I treated her with great respect and never even touched her. Okay? It's time to play That's the... because he was in handcuffs the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let me know when your son's there next time, though, and I won't bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> but, 
uh, you know. He, he, he so d- how about them 49ers? Oh, hey, you know, I just looked, and it's time for the theme song, and Jack's got to go on next. Except he doesn't know that he's going on next. I don't know. He, he he's said, taking lessons from Biden? What? I, I don't he's know. taking lessons from Biden? Anyway. <laughs> anyway. It's been fun tonight. It's been fun. I mean. Hey, no Phil tomorrow. I get to beat up on old people. Well, no Alex here right, on Thursday. Fine. So... <laughs> So uh, Friday, we'll see you. Uh, Let's say good night to Phil. Uh, Let's say good night to uh, Jeff. Let's say good night to Tony uh, and that horrid wallpaper. Uh, Mm. Vernon, (laughs) great to have you back again. You're terrific. I like you a lot. Uh, Kevin, like you a lot, too. Uh, And, and of course, uh, Lee Presson, the best. Thank you, Lee. And, And, of course, the lovely and attractive... Yeah, there she is. That's uh, that's Schmoody. Thank you, everybody. Give a big wave goodbye here, and uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll wave goodbye to you back at you. Okay, bye bye. Okay, that's it. That's our uh, that's our people to, for tonight. Uh, uh, stay tuned for the uh, intersection. It's next with uh, um, with our good friend. Um, let, me, let me just take care of this here let me get rid of let me get rid of skype hold on a second i can't what where is this where where, uh, i'm trying to uh, kill all these uh, various uh, things and i can't because uh skype uh, won't uh, let me see what uh, well anyway that's it i'm gonna kill the skype that's it uh, that's it for tonight. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, nice having you here. We'll see you again back same place uh, tomorrow night at uh, 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>